go ahead and call the meeting to order. All right, you're all set, go ahead. Great. So uh, good morning, calling to order the March 2nd meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public are able to access the meeting in real time via Zoom or by telephone. And we will just take a moment to make sure everybody can be heard. And I will start with you, Mandy. Present. Jennifer. Present. Anika. Present. Hi, Pat. Good timing. We're just making sure everyone can be heard. <laughs> I can be heard. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so <laughs> we have quite a big agenda today. And we also have something that has been added um, within 48 hours. So we have a swim um, proclamation that's been added and our is it a, it's a proclamation? Did I get that right? <laughs> so it's not, yeah, okay, great. So we have sponsors that are coming for both our student debt resolution and for um, the swim. So I'm going to suggest, I, I told, um, and I, I didn't hear back one way or another, although I think the community sponsor for student debt did, receive the email. So um, hopefully they'll be here. I said to come from 10 on. So we're going to do what we said we were going to do and start with our town council rules of procedure review. And so um, let me just check something. Okay, great. So first, just want to generally say I think um, we have a lot to review with respect to the input that we've received. Um, and I will acknowledge that I um, I had quite a lot of input um, that I put in there and maybe even, you know, so when we get to that, we can talk about that and whether or not how, how kind of deep, deeply into it do we do we want to get. Um, but what I'd like to do is pull up first, pull up the Mandy, do you have everything open there? I'm just working off of two. Could you I do what do you want? Yeah, I think, you know, so we have this list of all of the counselor input. Um, and then, of course, we have the rules themselves. So um, I think let's pull up the list first. Is there a way? To I, I can probably share both if you give me some time. Yeah, take take a second. That would be excellent. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, Give me a second to fix this. Sure. So I've got the current rules on the, I don't know what side of your screen it is, the right side, I think, and the list on the left side. Um, the, the current rules are not what you sent me, Michelle, um, in terms of your proposed revisions, because that was an old version. Mm -hmm. So I can, I have that on my computer, but um, this is just a blank copy of the current rules. Okay, perfect. So do we want to go through, the, so this is the, all of the counselor input. Um, and so we're going back now several weeks that we requested this input. So I think we'll want to go through um, each of these um, pieces of feedback and then uh, talk about just whether we're going to include them or what we want to do with them. Um, but before we go into that, are there just any general questions about the process or comments or suggestions? Okay. Okay, so um, the first, and I think Mandy, these first couple were yours, is that correct? Do you wanna speak to those? Um, you know, I, I can speak to them. The, the second bullet point, I wonder if it would be easiest to go through the rules in the order they're listed here, like. Sure. 
the whole order. So there's four that I had, but one of them's 1.2. And then there's a couple of ones and twos before we get to 3.3. So I can talk about 1.2. The proposed language I have for 1.2 is actually in 10.5. It's that second bullet point, um, mm -hmm. which is the, my, my concern with 1.2 was not any of the wording there other than do these apply to council committees? And if so, which rules? Um, and in looking at it from the last time we talked about this, I think just changing rule 10.5i might be the way to go and might clarify that um, such that we don't have to memorize, uh, we don't have to change 1.2. Yeah. Will you scroll down to 10.5 quickly? So 10.5 is powers and duties of standing and ad hoc council committees. Mm -hmm. And so instead of just saying minutes shall comply with rule 3.5a, I think we can just, we could move it to a instead of I, but I think we can just indicate which rules we want the committees to comply with of these rules in that list, mm -hmm. including the rule 3.5a, right? But. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was your thinking just without looking at each one of them? What was your thinking on why those particular rules? Um, I will go up to the table of contents to say. So 1.4 is parliamentary procedure, which means that's what we default to on committees. So that would just say the committees default to Robert's rules if no other rules apply. 3.4, remote participation. It brings in remote participation for the committees too. Um, 3.4, 3.5a is the minutes. That's the one that's already in 10.5i. Um, 4.3 is the ability to have multiple comment periods in a meeting. 5.1 just talks about, I think, regular meetings in terms of public comment and what is required for public participation at regular meetings. We can go look at that one. 5.2 is public hearings, so that would require the committees that are holding public hearings to comply with the public hearing sort of rules, um, which CRC has already been doing when I've run CRC meetings from a CRC point of view, but it would just sort of clarify that those are the public hearing rules since committees are doing public hearings. 7.13, all of six is code of courtesy conduct and debate, so the whole thing. Um, and then seven, one is the order of motion seniority, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. Seven, three is that the chair can call a recess when necessary. And seven, four regard, reply, uh, relates to points of order. So when I went through, um, those are the ones that seemed most like, most, most related to runnings of meetings versus president duties and things like that. Right. Any, um, well, I, I'll say I, these all look really good to me and I'm curious what other members think. And if there are other particular rules that should also be included um, pertaining to committees that anyone has identified. Oh. Anika, yeah. Oh, okay. So I, um, I also agree. I did have a question, and this could be, you know, out of scope. Um, with uh, so eight point one, introduction of bylaws and other measures. Um, is there anything around that that um, would be helpful? This could, this is, could be a side. Um, a side topic, but I do know that you know I've I've heard, and I'm sure we all have heard about. Uh, you know, from residents just as um, in terms of, of notice and when they find out about these things. And so I'm just curious as to to be a new point, is there anything in that rule that um, has to do with timing? Mm -hmm. Timing of what? Timing of like when they, um, the, the bylaws are introduced to public or even, you know, um, counselors, or is that just a general statement about? Uh, so I've pulled it up. It's 
basically how they need introduced. So you can't introduce the measure orally. You need something in writing for people to look at. Um, it should say who's introducing it basically. So, it, it, you know, I've pulled it up. There's not timing about like when it needs acted on by the council or anything in this. Okay. Um, you know, they, there is timing in the charter about some of the stuff about like notice to the public, particularly for bylaws and stuff like that, but that's in the charter. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you, that's clear. Okay, so if there aren't um, any objections to adding um, Mandy's suggestions and there aren't any additions, um, then I would propose that we go ahead and, and so Mandy, just help me, we don't have to vote on each one. We're going to do this and then vote on the slate of everything, right? Okay. We can do it either way, but yeah. I think for, um, efficiency's sake, if we could go through and then like we would with the consent agenda, if something needs to be pulled out separately, we'll do that. <laughs> All right. So moving on then, um, if we could, so it, was your suggestion, Mandy, to sort of go through, I think we can just go through. So let's go to section 1.6. Okay, so this was my question. So, and it may have been naive at the time I asked it. So proposed amendments need to be read at two separate meetings. Is that, um, would a seasoned counselor speak to that <laughs> or? Yeah, I, please, Mandy. I, can. I, I can't find my raise hand button easily with the screen share, so sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. There were a couple options when we were initially drafting the formal rules. A am I the only counselor on GOL? I think, Pat, you weren't on the initial rules committee, were you, Pat? I think it was just from GOL. I think it's just me. So. When we were initially drafting these rules three years ago, um, there were a couple options for amending and repealing the rules of procedure. One was two readings. One was um, sort of that we saw in other rules. One was this two readings. One was um, a plain majority vote. So nothing other than just majority vote. But but one of the, the two populars were two readings or um, like a two thirds vote. Mm -hmm. of the council. Um, so a majority vote, but not, uh, you know, super majority, but not two readings or two readings were tended to be the most popular options uh, councils had chosen. Um, we chose majority plus two readings instead of one reading plus a super majority. You can choose one reading and majority. Um, it was just a decision um, that the drafters made um, I don't have a, personally, I don't have a big preference one way or the other, or even whether just majority of the council would be fine. Like I just, the two readings can get frustrating. I will say that um, yeah. and add time to council meetings. So maybe moving away from that to another option would be good. Yeah, and I think that's why I brought this is it just it felt a little clunky and cumbersome for this to have two readings and um, we've if we think about, you know, how far out we already are into this cycle and we haven't had the first reading. Um, so I think I would be in favor of changing it and I see Jennifer's hand up please Jennifer. Yeah, I think, um, I mean it's I. I acknowledge it's hard to maybe imagine a, a changing a rule that would maybe be so controversial that we would need this extra level but I feel like it should probably be there if it ever comes up I think to either have the two readings in the majority or a super majority I, I think I just feel better keeping that Mm -hmm. just to have, I would just feel, even though I can't really example when that would be needed. 
And do, would you compromise on doing the, the super majority and just so having one reading with a super majority to pass to pass any amendments? Yes. Pat, what's your feeling on this? And Anika, please, what are your feelings? Pat, you're muted. I apologize, I had to leave. Um, so I'm not, what we're talking about now is one six. Right, and Mandy gave us a little background and said there, when these rules were being um, produced, there were several options in terms of what this would look like for amendments. And so one of the options was to do what's been done here, to have the two meetings. Another option would be to only have one reading with a supermajority. Um, and there sounded like there were even other options to that. So we're talking about if we want to, like we're going to do here now, if yeah. we want to amend these, would we, can we settle on having one reading with a supermajority, for example, as opposed to having to have two readings? Well, that seems fine to me, actually. Um, as you know, I, everyone would have the information in advance, and uh, so. Yes. And in our case, everyone gave input as well, and that will happen. Yeah. happen. Yeah. So, Anika, how do you feel about that? I agree. I think that's a compromise. That's a great compromise. Okay. Mandy, you're typing it up. So I'm assuming, are you okay with Fine. that? I'm just listening to people and doing it to try and move things efficiently. So <laughs> right, I'm, I'm fine. Like, as I said, I didn't have a big preference one way or the other. Okay, great. All right. So let's move on then to 2.1c. Um, 2.1c is the language too vague the council may reorganize at any time at its discretion I believe uh, that is exactly from the charter okay i think right. that's the wording in the charter so i think we keep it then right <laughs> it's second it's, now two okay <laughs> um and yes. when it that is, that is the exact language in the charter. Yeah, so it has to stay. They organize at any time at its discretion. Okay, perfect. And when it says it may reorganize at any time at its discretion, can you just say hmm. what that means? That means if we're unhappy with the president or vice president, even though their terms are elected for a year, we can by majority vote say, I move to reorganize our, our leadership. That's okay. what it means. So I think that was what I meant when I asked, is the language too vague? I think I did click on the charter, but I, I, if, I didn't know what that meant um, right off the yeah, bat. Yeah, because I thought it meant, uh, I, I should know this, but I thought it meant we could reorganize committees, et cetera, et cetera. It didn't occur to me that it would be about uh, reorganizing leadership. Yeah, I mean, it's under the section of council president, two, section 2.2 .2 of the charter is council president and vice president election and term powers and duties state of the town address. Could that then be referenced in this, which would help people like me and Michelle? Um, and me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if we could add that, I think it would be, I know it makes it a little more wordy, but not well, every. Go ahead, Pat, sorry. Well, I was just going to say we could just reference the section of the charter. It is uh, referenced there. Yeah, it is referenced here, but then it There's needs. A hot link. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. So there is a link, but it has to be clicked on, and then you know, yeah. so it, you wouldn't just by reading this know what that meant. Um, Jennifer, yes. So I was just going to say, I think for members of the public, it would be helpful to have that. So they don't have to then go research the charter. I mean, they could, but. Like it's certainly, well, you know, I I'm, was just very recently a member of the public. I would have read that as the council can just decide they're gonna have, you know. So I just sort of put in the title of that charter section after the charter. Does that help? That helps me. Yes, yes, it does. yes it that's does. excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Um, so moving on to section 3.2 E. Uh, 
Um, and the rule is all regular council meetings shall provide for a period of public comment. This is also per the charter. Um, and my comment here was, um, so I, I'm talking about more topic specific public comment. And it does seem that this has been a sort of a, I've heard this come up in different ways on multiple occasions on whether it makes sense to have more topic specific public comment. Um, and I'm curious what this group feels about that. Um, I know we have hearings and we have forums and other ways, but when there are specific topics, but is this essentially a matter of the council president deciding when and vice president when the agenda is being created, whether there will be topic specific public comment? So this particular rule versus rule five, which is the also C rule five, this rule comes from the charter section 2.6 D2. This is why we referenced it, which requires regular council meetings to have public comment. So my guess is that exact language is the language in the charter 2.6 D. Um, I'll look. And so if we wanted to have the rules include something more about yeah. topic specific, it would be, it wouldn't be here. Yes. It would be in the public comment section. So it's in the, it, yes. So the rules regarding po topic specific public comment are basically rule five, I believe. Um, so when we get to rule five. Um, Perfect. That's we should look at that. Let me make a note. Um, But yeah, so this one, this language comes from the charter because they're required. Multiple public comment periods are addressed in rule five. Okay, great, we'll get there then. Okay, so then uh, moving on to section 3.9. 3.3B. Oh. Yeah. From up top. So basically oh, I want to yeah. delete B because the law is changing and, and it's actually not accurate. This B is not accurate right now, right? Because of right. the law. And we suspect the law will change anyway um, on a more permanent basis. But I feel like at this point, we should delete it and wait to see what the law becomes and decide whether we need to add something back in. Because right now we can't really guess. I think uh, we should delete it. I agree. I think that's... And that didn't, I mean, there's no charter reference to that at all. That's just... It was the CMR reference, the code of, you know, Massachusetts regulations, but it's been overridden for a number of years. So when I was going through, I was like, oh, it's not accurate. Let's... Even, even pre-COVID, it wasn't accurate. Um, yes, it was. It was accurate pre-COVID. Oh, it was pre-COVID. Okay. Yes. But once COVID hit, so for the last two right. years, it has not been accurate. And, right. and I suspect when the legislature gets around to finalizing changes to the law that goes into that CMR, um, it will no longer be accurate either, but we don't know what would be accurate. Right. 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 And do we just in for purposes of tracking this, Mandy, so that we make sure that we don't, you know, it doesn't slip through the cracks if something changes. Um, is that just a matter of it being noted in a report or how, how would you suggest? You know, you might want to note it in the future agenda items as a note for future self type thing. <laughs> um. Okay, great. I will do that. All right. Okay. Stick it on the refrigerator. <laughs> 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 a year from now, right? Right. <laughs> um, all right. So now um, 3.9. Okay, the good old work sessions. <laughs> um, and so the comment here is um, you, so, and, and I think we've sort of had some experience now seeing how we initially, I think, had set up the elementary school meeting to be a work session and then that moved to being a special meeting. And I, I recall Lynn, explaining briefly why that was, but the comment here is um, 
use of work sessions and what triggers them? And is there anything, especially based on this experience that we've just recently had, that would make this rule more clear or help to guide us um, better with respect to work sessions? I'm also noting that it's uh, upon request of the president or a majority of the full council. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not clear if, for example, when we thought about creating one for elementary, if we voted on that, and if it says a majority of the full council, is that consensus or is that by motion? Yeah, so it would have to be by motion in some sense, right? Because other, and it would have to be in a meeting versus there are ways to call a special meeting that don't happen within a council meeting. Um, through the charter, I think it's four, but it might be three counselors. Um, so we could potentially change that from a majority to like four counselors or something. And, but I don't know whether we want to, right? Because work sessions are involved, right? And I mean, not that special meetings are involved either. Um, but yeah, I, in theory, that would be a vote of the council. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? Um, so the public, public dialogues require a vote of the council if we go to 5.3. A majority vote is that, Mandy? It, it requires a majority vote of the council, right? Um, I'm sorry, just for clarification, are we talking yeah, about, public about um, majority as opposed to president or majority or altering what that altering majority of council and keeping president or? From my perspective, I think the president always gets that ability, I think, um, is that it says president or majority right now, right? Yeah, so so that's what the work session says right now. And a president can always call a meeting per the charter. They can always call a special meeting. And so in some sense, a work session is meant to be a meeting of the council. And so, you know, Whereas the public dialogue has to be a majority vote to hold a public dialogue. It doesn't talk about the president being able to call that. Right. Um, I, I honestly don't have any issue with 3.9. I think it's, uh, the question about what triggers it, it would be an issue that was surfacing in the council that either the president saw or a majority of counselors uh, wanted to look at. So I, I just don't see that we need to change it at all. Jennifer? Yeah, I agree with Pat, but I, I also, I don't want to speak, I had a question. Have we ever had a public dialogue? No. No, okay. We've had an open meeting of the residents, which is different than a public dialogue, but very similar to a public dialogue. Um, and we've not had a work session. Is that no. true? Okay. So okay. what we had, it was not a work session. What we had Monday, that was a special meeting. Yes. Yep. And um, there was a particular reason that Lynn differentiated and made it a special meeting. And I'm um, forgetting what that was at the moment. Um, but so I, I think everybody's fine with keeping it this way. It sounds like um, there aren't any objections to that, I guess. So in, in the future though, if we're going by the rules, we're gonna do a motion vote to approve if it's not the president that's creating the work session. Okay. So basically if the president disagrees, the council can force a vote. Right, that's the different, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got it. And okay. maybe it was a special meeting on Monday because after retreat, we all agreed we wanted to learn more about the school elementary school building. Right. And, and maybe I, we didn't have to go through this whole process. And that's why it was a special meeting, not a work session. I do see Athena's hand up. Maybe she can save us here. <laughs> yeah, if, 
if, if it's helpful to have information about why we did that as a special meeting rather than a work session, I can I can speak about that for quickly. Um, the language in the rules about work sessions kind of laid out um, a process where the public would be involved and it would be a public conversation and so forth. And we didn't want to present that meeting as though it were something that the council were working on because we wanted to clearly differentiate what the council was doing was having a conversation internally and not and not stepping into the school building committee's arena. And, um, and also work sessions, um, I think require public comment and so on. So we wanted to kind of clarify that and make it a little bit. Um, yep, that makes a lot of sense. Clearer Thank what was going on that night. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, that's really helpful. Okay, so we're gonna leave this as is, it sounds like. Is any any objection to that or changes? Okay. Um, so section 5.1F. Um, this is your um, special comment, multiple comment section, public uh, comment section. Okay, and this is my comment. I don't recall this being a council practice. So let me look at what I was talking about in addition to public comment, particularly held near the beginning. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So yeah, I don't, this is the, the last sentence is what I'm referring to when presentation discussions or major action items appear on the agenda for the first time, the president shall include additional public comment sessions specific to the issue. Am I, maybe I've just missed that being the case, but I, my memory did not serve that that was a practice. It, it has not been for about two years when I was vice president the first year we attempted to right after this, but then in some sense, the public found it confusing. Um, it wasn't all about just streamlining meetings. Um, it obviously adds time to meetings to do separate sessions, but it became what's a major issue, number one. What major, what's a major action item? All presentations, you know, we were having a lot of COVID presentations. Do we need specific public comment for each one of these? You know, it, it almost became I, Athena can probably talk a little bit more about it, but it, it became in some sense unworkable from a get business done meeting perspective. Um, and from the public's perspective, we ended up with people commenting on specific items during the public comment period, and then potentially again during the other one because they weren't sure when they were supposed to make their comment for whatever, you know. So it also became very confusing to always have them versus when then in a particular item, um, you know, if we go back to the moratorium, most of the public comments were on the moratorium at our first reading, but it wasn't during a specific public comment period, it still worked. Um, so it hasn't been in as, as a practice, that second sentence specifically. I, you know, I was thinking, oh, Pat, please. No, uh, Jennifer had her hand up first. Sorry, Jennifer, yes. Oh, no, I'm just wondering um, if instead of shall or, or maybe, I, I don't know, you could say that president, you know, something to the effect of, you know, has the option to, but I suppose that that goes without saying. Is that Well, correct? you could change it to may, which would make may. it. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, that, that works too, yeah. yeah. I guess I, I feel uh, differently than Mandy Jo, because uh, I remember times where it was very specific uh, that we had come, you know, that an issue would be presented, the council would, the counselors would discuss it, and then we opened it to public comment. And I think that's a very good idea. Um, and, and so I, and I do hear about, you know, ble things bleeding, they say it once, and then they say it again, and it's the same person. But perhaps that should be um, that the president shouldn't recall someone it, you know, if they've already spoken about forests and and solar siting, then there, you know, are they? Do we need them at the specific period? No, you know, I think, um, I don't know. It it's just never bothered me, and and I kind of like it. But. 
I, I'm thinking is specifically like for reparations, for example, you know, this is something where it's going to be brought to the council and there there's going to potentially be lots of questions and it's new. Um, and so would that be a time where having a specific public comment after, you know, a discussion um, would be helpful? Um, and I, I do agree, Pat. I, I, I like it. I think um, it works. And if there's more clarity up front by the council president to say, you know, we're going to have specific public comment for these items. Um, so please hold your comments if they're about X, Y, or B. Um, and, and then really keeping to that. Um, yeah, and I, then, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Pat. Yep. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I interrupted. Uh, your hand is still up, Pat. Okay, so now it's down, and I think it was Ma Mandy. Please, <laughs> I figured out where to find the raise hand button. Um, I, I don't have a problem with leaving that sentence in if it's a may, and and I'll give an example of the way it's written right now. Um, the flood maps presentation would have required a specific public comment session. The potential five minute ECAC report presentation that Lynn's considering on just their annual report would require specific public comment. And the minute, you know, and so with a shall, there's no leeway for, right. for decisions on, and which is why it probably hasn't been being followed, right? Um, yeah. So I would support a change to May. I, you know, th that, that I would actually truly support. Anika? Yes, so um, I had a, my question is in regards to management of the comments or, or controllables. Um, I think it's, it's great. We can always, you know, ask people and if it's announced maybe once or twice um, ahead of time that there would be, um, you know, additional space to comment on a specific issue, um, especially if it would be considered a major issue. But would this also be or allow us the ability to look ahead and think, you know, that some of an issue that would require separate or additional comment would that point to the need for a work session mm -hmm. for around that issue ahead of time? Yeah. It encourages us to use the public dialogues more. Say it again. It could encourage us to use the public dialogue section more. Right. Athena? Oh, Mandy, you beat me to the punch about public dialogues. That's exactly the point that I was going to raise. I think that from, from my perspective, there have been times that members of the public have felt frustrated that they aren't allowed to engage with the council during public comment and we can't have a discussion. And so I think that encouraging the use of public dialogue sessions around issues where there are a lot of public comments and there are questions, but there isn't necessarily a hearing required could be a good idea to help manage that, um, that process and mm. probably pro provide the public with a better um, venue for having those conversations and uh, feeling more heard and being able to answer questions that they have. That's great. That's really great. Yeah. Um, Jennifer. Um, yes, I wanted to say why I'm thrilled to hear what Athena just said, because I think public dialogues that would go a long way towards people feeling heard you know, rather than just commenting and there yeah, uh, is not a response. But um, no, I just also agree. I think the may, because the shall doesn't really give the president any leeway. Right. Well, I get, you know, so I'm just saying what, so I, I, I'm good with how it is now. I think that, and I have heard the president or chairs of committees say before general public comment, we're going to be having another comment period on a specific right. topic. So please leave your general public comments, not include public comments for this specific topic. Absolutely, yeah. Anika? Yeah, um, I agree at all. I just wanted to add and just clarify. So even if there were to be, you know, if we had two, three, four, five um, public uh, comment uh, periods, they still would be comments that we would not be able to respond to. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. so that would just be frustration after frustration after frustration <laughs> for public. <laughs> like, oh, I got in a little bit more, but now, like, I still can't. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, 
Yeah. So what do we, do we want to look at public hearings to make sure that looks the way that we uh, would like it to look? So five, yeah, there was a comment here from, I think it's Andy. Yes, that is Andy. Yep. And, mm -hmm. and he was talking, I think about um, whether to indicate in here somewhere what committees are holding what public hearings. I, yeah, to establish a real hearings to be held by a committee. And I think GOL talked about this a couple months ago. Um, Pat, do you remember? I think we talked about this of adding like which hearings, which committees do, and didn't we decide not to do that? Yeah, but I'm, I'm blanking on the logic. Um, So if I'm understanding what Andy's saying, he's saying we should indicate particular subject matter that can go to a committee for a hearing and therefore, um, or be referred to a particular committee like with TSO um, to save time for the council. Is that? Yeah, I think that's what he's doing. And GOL looked at language and then decided that the, that votes of the council like that probably shouldn't be codified in the rules. I think that was our reasoning because then you have to continually, if you change that vote, update the rules, right? right. Um, and so what we could recommend if we think poll hearings would be better at TSO instead of the whole council, we could, in addition to these rules changes, recommend that the council vote to designate TSO as the entity to hold the poll, required poll hearings. And we could make that recommendation. Yeah, and that seems so incredibly logical in terms of the poll discussion. <laughs> it really so, does. <laughs> but I, but I, I do feel like um, I don't think that we should be listing and allow. I, I think it's important that generally for this kind of public hearing that it be the full council that's there. Um, you know, with the poll thing is so specific to, to and directly affects uh, or is uncovered under the charge of TSO. I'm being redundant, but. No, that makes a lot of sense though. I think that, that you're right. I think most things should be heard before, but what we're doing now is instead of identif we're identifying what Andy's identified and pulling it out and gonna make a recommendation on that. Does everybody agree with that wave? Okay. Um, and is there anything else, okay, um, is there anything else just before we move on in public hearings? Are we good with public hearings now that we've talked about you trying to use them more when needed? So the one thing I would say about the format, um, a couple of things. The, the biggest one is sometimes there's people that, aren't necessarily in favor or in opposition. But given the format we have here, um, they don't know where to make their comment um, because they just want to make a comment but don't want to say, yes, support it or no, oppose it. Um, should we add another section? Um, should we consolidate into public asking question and then public comments on the matter versus questions, you know, questions and then comments so that it's not always those in favor and then those in opposition and then those with no opinion, you know, uh, could it just be public asking questions and then public speaking on the matter, you know, those are two ways we could do it. I personally prefer that. And I think it sort of moves us away from this AB as Anika would call it, or this sort of separation of who's in favor or who's opposed. Um, and when the comments have come in, it may have been the CRC hearing on the moratorium, which is the last one that I've caught. It just was, it was like, sort of like there was something about it that it just didn't that would have felt better if it wasn't that way um so i i would support that change How, does anyone else have any feelings about that same yeah jennifer 
Yeah, same. I mean, you know from someone's comments where they stand. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I think we can be pretty good at sorting out. <laughs> yeah. And there's more nuance. I mean, somebody might be in favor and, right. you know, there's like more to it than that. <laughs> CRC gets a lot of, I don't like it, but if you changed these things, I would, right? And which one do you go in, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I, here's the proposed amendment, just public comment versus public asking a question. Mm. I don't, I don't know. That's not great wording. We could say, pub, you know, four could be public speaking in favor, in opposition, or neutral. <laughs> I or think public speaking about the measure or something. Yeah, public, how about just public yeah, questions and public comments? <laughs> right, I would like, because I liked how Mandy always, for the CRC, you did have questions for different from comments. So I would yeah. definitely want to keep the, because sometimes, yeah, we, we can just say question. asking a question instead yeah. of not change Question, that yeah. Questions, comments, and concerns, even. Yeah. yeah. We actually started doing that when I chaired the local historic district commission, doing questions and then comments based on how Mandy did the CRC. I found that very helpful. Yeah. And one of the other matters that's come up is when there are folks from outside of the community in terms of sort of having, um, you know, an order of when people are speaking. And I think Mandy, you followed that at the, at the last hearing that CRC had. Um, does anyone have any strong feelings one way or another about that aspect? No, okay. All right. I'm sorry, Michelle, were you referring to like if someone is outside of Amherst then the order of how and when they can speak? Yeah, like I think right now it calls for um, the chair can ask people that are in Amherst to speak first and ask and then and then have folks um, who are from outside of town, if time allows, speak after that. Pat? I don't feel comfortable with that. Um, and I'm thinking about times where someone from outside of Amherst said something that really clarified the issue in a different way. I don't think they should be separated out. Um, I really don't. So they are technically separated out in our regular meetings? Right, but I don't oh. think they should be there either. <laughs> so I, I guess I have a different opinion, which is we do, yeah, I, I agree with Pat on sometimes there's non-residents that that can offer, but um, our role as counselors is to enact stuff and act for our residents, not what is in the best interest of Pelham's residents say. Um, you know, I, I, and, and I'll go with, there, there was a point in time where we got a lot of um, public comments about, hey, we need to pave X road because it's a pain for Pelham residents to drive over. Right, right, that guy right? that- like, Well, yeah. that's not my problem, you know? <laughs> you know? And that's, that's a, not a great example because, well, it's a pain for Amherst residents to drive over it too, but it was really the Pelham residents pushing for that particular road to be paved, not the Amherst. Right, and right. So, yeah. Yeah. And for example, another example is like the Board of Health more recently has had a lot of folks coming from out of town all across the state, actually, um, and maybe not even in the state, I don't know, but a lot of folks coming from outside of the community. And so I think there's a certain sort of courtesy that we want, that's not the best word, but that we want to give to residents to be able to speak first on behalf of the issues. And then um, Anika, yeah. Uh, when you're saying the Board of Health have people coming, is that, you know, for vac vaccination? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. yeah, from that, yeah. I, I think, yeah, that's a... A huge issue. It's, it, and and I, could, I could see it seeing as, um, you know, Amherst has made it so easy to receive and, and available um, and other communities have. But my question, I also had um, a question in regards to people outside of Amherst. I feel like I have heard that asked of, of com through comments. 
Um, and I'm just wondering, even if that was us, how, how do you manage? Because I, I feel like I've heard of that since someone comes, um, you know, from calling from Schutzberg or something like this. Um, so I was just wondering, like, even if that, how, how could you really enforce that aside from when someone, I mean, you can ask, but what would you do if someone's speaking? Would you, you would have to cut them off, right? Well, they have to identify where they're from before they start speaking. Right. Um, but they, they, I mean, like they've started talking, they've come in. So I feel like I've heard it be asked um, that it would be Amherst residents speak. And then, you know, you would have someone come on and when they identify themselves, they are calling from somewhere else. So how, how would you manage that? You know, that, that's the, the question. Can't, I can't, I can't speak. I can, I can try and. Do this. Yeah. We've started seeing this with Lynn at council meetings, you know, in terms of her recognizing she's, we don't have a written register, right? So she's saying everyone raised their hands. She's marking a line and saying that's the end of the line. And then when I get to that person, I'll determine this D3 non residents and, and residents not on the register if time allows. And she says, you know, she did this on Monday. There mm -hmm. is no more time. We're done. No more time allowed. She hasn't been doing it from residents to non-residents, um, but that is how you would do it. Um, when we were in person with in-person comment, we didn't really do it well with a register. That one, you know, but but online, that is how you would do it. That is how I did it. I looked at for the one hearing, I think on the moratorium, I said, residents, raise your hand. I made a I made a notation in my own mind where that line was, figured out how much time to allow, and then asked non-residents to, to see how many there were. And I would make a decision at that time, is that too many or not, right? You know, a lot of times only one or two additional people had raised their hand. If it had been 10 residents wanting to speak and 50 non-residents, I probably would have said no to the non-residents. Um, because then I could have allowed more time for the residents to speak, right? So it's it's basically up to the presiding officer to figure out a way to manage it, but it is manageable. Um, and we've seen some examples of how that can be done, how two and three together work. Yeah. Athena has her hand raised. Yes, exactly. Yep. Lynn and I have talked about um, changing the process for when, when we go back to in-person meetings so that people will sign in on a register one of the first in-person meetings we had after COVID, there was a really big group of people. I think it was about uh, defunding the police. And um, there were some people who were upset about being misgendered when they were being called on. And so at that point, after that meeting, we had talked about um, direct for in-person meetings, asking folks to sign in. And then I would call their names from the register rather than um, Lynn calling on people from the audience and having to describe them because that could be um, offensive. But um, if if it's important to the council to have residents and non-residents designated um, separately on that register, then we can definitely work that into our future process. Great. Thank you for that, Athena. Um, Pat? I guess the, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I guess the only thing that bothers me about uh, it's a good idea. The register is a good idea, resident, and then calling for non-resident. I think that's an excellent idea. But at the same time, uh, I, I'm really concerned that a lot of issues like homelessness, which is a regional issue, uh, and and certainly solar siting and stuff, which which we're looking at relationships with Pelham and Belchertown. There are reasons for non-residents to be speaking on issues. Um, uh, in Amherst. So I just want to make sure that all of a sudden there isn't this removal of non-resident voices where it's appropriate. Um, so that's just a, a concern I have. Any way that uh, who gets to speak um, gets limited makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Jennifer? Yeah, I just want to echo Pat because I thought some of the comments, I, if a person, I think from Conway, a resident spoke on Monday, and that was very helpful. You know, I thought that was, it was very relevant, that person's experience, you know, with a solar facility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's balancing the idiot right. with the um, 
potholes <laughs> and the real issues that we have to look at that do affect our neighbors. So. There are no idiots, Pat, though. I'll <laughs> no, no, there are idiots. <laughs> 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 Come on, Michelle. I don't but, say, but they, I'm not saying be mean to them, right. but there are idiots out in the world. And they don't live in Amherst. None of them. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Well, and none of them are on the <laughs> council. <laughs> <laughs> Anika. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that my questions were more about time management, you know? Oh, I know. Um, I know. Not like limiting inclusion of, of with voices and, and in, especially where it makes sense. Um, but I do think, I do recall that I've heard like, okay, Amherst, let's, you know, get in the residence and someone's like, hey, shoot, you know, or, or, you know, something else like within that time when that's asked. So I was, um, I guess to be more specific, it was that, is there a way when we're virtual, like if you see people's names, um, like for instance, Lynn looking, can she see where they are or is she just seeing a name? So if you're asking, you know, I mean, you have people, it's like, I, you said what you said, I heard you, but I have something to say. So that that was my question. Like, how is is that, is this even manageable? Like, can, can she see how is that possible? And we wouldn't know until someone is actually speaking. So it could be about, you know, we're talking, we were talking about solar, someone decides this is my time to talk about the the potholes and wherever or you know <laughs> yeah and i think there are also cases where we've seen um you know it be asked that members like bipoc people be brought in before you know in certain circumstances so i think that it's like a matter of sort of the presiding officer as mandy said feeling out the room and what the situation is and what's called for for that particular um, piece. But I do I, I do think what Athena said is helpful in terms of as we go back to having more in person, although that's a whole nother whole nother topic altogether that we won't. But are, so are we are we comfortable with with moving on at this point? Good. Okay. All right. So um, Andy had a second comment here, um, and I think this is really important. So um, section 5.5 for district meetings. And I know after I saw his comment, I actually reached out to uh, the counselors at large to invite them to the district one meeting. And Mandy, would you speak as a just briefly from your perspective as uh, an at large counselor on this? I always like being invited to the meetings because I haven't found a way to keep track of them unless I am invited to them. Um, I, I make as many as I can just because they're useful, right? And, and as Andy says in this one, um, we tend to, as at-large counselors, try to just, at least the past practice for at-large counselors in the past council was that we're just there to listen. We're not there to help you run your meeting. Um, you know, it's your meeting as a district counselor, but you know, it's a time where we get feedback too. So, you know, just listening to the residents and seeing what their concerns are are good. I don't know whether it needs written into the district meeting rule, like you must invite at large counselors. Um, I just find it a very nice courtesy um, and all to, so that I know about them and can go um, if possible. Certain yeah. districts have invited the at-large counselors to be part of the presentation when the at-large counselor has, you know, in a district where you're talking about the budget, Andy has generally been invited to do that presentation if it's not Kathy's district. Um, you know, right. uh, and, and that's a different situation, but, you know, I don't know whether it needs written into the rule. Yeah, I don't think it needs to be written in the rules. Uh, we always, as District 2, uh, for any district meeting, we always invite the at-large counselors, whether they have a specific role as in finance or not. Um, and sometimes they come and sometimes they don't, but it's very valuable. Um, so I don't think it needs to be written in. Okay. Well, maybe what we can do is ask Lynn, if, if just so that Andy feels heard, we can ask Lynn to sort of make some sort of announcement about that being um, practice that we want to, right? Does that? 
I don't know. I, I, I just don't think I, I can. Well, I can. I can just say I didn't know that as a new yeah. counselor. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I think asking Lynn during her president's comments or president's report to say, hey, district meetings are starting up. Please let the entire council know about when you're holding the district meetings, because other counselors, including the at larges, may like to attend. Yeah, Something that's a good that, idea. You know, that's I a good idea. Could announce. Because okay. it, I, I'm not sure it's just the at larges that might like to attend, too. Right. Um, yeah. OK, so I'll make I'll, I'll make a note um, of that. Uh, and Anika, I, I, I see your hand and we'll take Anika and then we're going to pause because our sponsors are here. I'll be right uh, back. For both the student debt and the swim. So I, I want to honor the time that I've given them. And so we're going to pause, but go ahead, Anika. Uh, I do believe that Lynn had such a message about um, the district meeting, especially with us being new and how they start and um, that did include, uh, you know, inviting at large counselors. And then also, you know, um, I know for some of the meetings that there have been also department heads or whatever as, you know, relevant um, to discussion or just introduction that have been invited to the meetings, uh, you know, so I, I'd imagine it could be a, a good number of people that could be invited mm -hmm. to district meetings, you know, depending on what the agenda is. I, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that I'm not sure that that email, you know, just came to specific districts. I think that it came to all of us. Everyone. Yeah, that's very possible. And I could have certainly missed it. Mandy. Uh, just a quick comment, which is instead of putting something in a rule, because we have this other section here um, of town staff clarification, maybe um, someone Lynn or Anna or our leadership could work on some sort of FAQ for new counselors on district meetings, right? You know, like how to run a district meeting, how to get town staff there, who to let know about it for promotion purposes and all of that. It doesn't need to be in the rules, but it could be a document that is part of like becoming a counselor type thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's really good. And actually, that reminds me, um, we do have language that came from Angela when I was inquiring before my first district meeting. Um, and I thought that I had included it in here. I spoke with Lynn about it, and she said that we should consider actually adding the language that Angela gave us into the rules. Um, so let's come back to that thought. Hold that thought. That's a great thought. <laughs> um, okay. So we're going to begin um, because we have Ian here, who's our community sponsor for the um, student debt. We're gonna begin with that and then we'll go to the swim. Um, and so, yeah, Pat, please. I was just gonna say, can you bring Ian and Alicia in? Yes, and Anna as well, right? Is Anna? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, great. And so we will bring them in. Would you like me to share that on the screen? Please do, yes. And I am just gonna turn my camera off very quickly to go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, but before I do, I'll welcome um, Ian and welcome Ian. <laughs> nice to see Hi, you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for bringing this forward. Um, and yes. welcome Anna and Alicia. Um, and Pat, since you're a sponsor of this, do you want to kick things off while I now go to the bathroom real quick? <laughs> Does that work for you? No, I have to go to the bathroom. Uh, no. <laughs> I'll, I'll be right back. <laughs> um, I, Ian um, forwarded both a letter from um, the uh, WMALF um, and a resolution that they were they had written. Um, which felt and it and I think we all got it. I believe we all got it, and it just seemed incredibly important to me, um, in terms of um, really supporting people uh, I, across uh, across economic lines. Because one of the things that really hit me when I read the initial material was that people in technical schools and um, beautician schools and things like that are affected by student debt. And that hadn't registered to me in any way. Um, so it, it sort of broadened um, my view of what the need was. Um, and so it, it's something I can really support. I'm not being very articulate, but I think Ian and uh, 
others can speak. You know, Ian, why is it important to you? Um, well, for one, I, I have student debt and my wife has student debt. Um, and a lot of members of my union have student debt. Um, I am recently um, graduated from UMass uh, uh, GO UAW 2322, the graduate employee organization. Um, but I, as, as you pointed out, um, the, the framing around student debt in, in political discourse most often has to do with, you know, student debt shouldn't be canceled because that'll um, just benefit uh, like uh, Ivy League graduates or, or what have you. Um, and as Pat pointed out, um, student debt affects anyone who, who seeks um, education beyond a, a senior, senior high school uh, diploma. Um, and, and as we point in that, that second, whereas uh, uh, vocational school, technical school, beautician schools, um, all, all levels of education. And it is both a, um, as well as a economic justice issue, it's a, it's a racial justice issue and a gender equity issue. Um, you can see uh, women hold two thirds of student debt across the country. Um, and black women hold, I believe it's 20% more than their, their white peers. Um, and just for a, a number of these, well, for, for all the reasons listed in, in the whereas, uh, um, the whereas is we at the Western Mass Area Labor Federation um, unanimously decided to pass this um, and, and enthusiastically. And, and th these are unions educator unions, as well as trades unions and service sector unions. Um, and, and what we're trying to do is, is draw the link between, um, well, just make the link that student debt affects our, our economies locally uh, at the state level and nationally, um, and that it, that it is a labor issue. Um, and part of our, our, our final demand was uh, our main demand is to have um, President Biden sign an executive order canceling all student debt. Um, but we also had a, a subsequent um, call for uh, state congressional and municipal elected officials to um, to sign on and, and also call on, on the White House to cancel student debt via executive order. Um, so I hope that gives a, a little bit of of context and background. That does, thank you. And um, Mandy, if you could add Councillor Walker as a sponsor, um, and I'd like to give both um, Anna and Alicia a, a moment to speak about if they'd like to, why they are um, sponsoring this resolution. And then I will, for Ian especially, explain what our role is here um, in GOL for this document. Um, so Alicia or Anna, would either of you like to speak? You're muted, Anna, if you, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna point to Alicia to see if she wanted to go first as an original um, sponsor. I signed on later, I'm still happy to talk then. Thank you, Anna. Um, so I wanted to just recognize all of the work that Ian did here on this first very quickly because um, he really did do all of the legwork. Um, and I just wanted to talk very quickly about why this resonates for me because I think Ian touched on all of the main points. And if you all were able to go through all of the whereas is like, those are all of the reasons um, why I support this resolution. Um, and so just for me as well, personally, so I also have student loan debt. I went to UMass. Um, and I also, so what happened for me after I went to college, I went to school in New York City for a semester and found out it was like way too expensive for me. And so I had to transfer to UMass. Um, and there was like an idle time in between for my transfer credits and the paperwork to go through where I enrolled in beautician school. Um, and so I also have student loan debt from that license that I have. And I just, it, I also didn't realize when I was doing those things because I was so young that this was going to really affect me for the long run because I know that when you're in college, you're seen as an adult, but you're still really learning about 
a lot of things, especially financial literacy, which is something that is so completely undertaught in our education system um, and so completely not equitably distributed, like the knowledge in regards to financial literacy and how to maintain finances and really how to even just climb out of poverty or low income like brackets of where you exist in this world. Um, so I really, this really resonated for me. Um, and this affects a lot of my family members, my friends, uh, my colleagues. I think almost everyone I know has student loan debt. And I think that this is a barrier to people moving up in the world and to progress. Um, and I think of all of the great things and accomplishments people could make, especially because we know that they have the extended education to do so if this weren't a barrier. Um, and so again, I just really wanna appreciate Ian and Pat and Anna also for all of the work that they did on this and to just state my very strong support of this resolution as well. Excellent, thank you, Alicia. Anna? Yeah, so I think a lot of the stories around student debt resonate because they're all very similar. I think this is something that we've seen uh, show up exponentially for folks who, uh, you know, millennials and Gen Z really are navigating student debt in a way that prior generations have not had to. Um, and so, you know, I, my story, uh, or Alicia's story really resonated with me because of the sort of the lack of financial literacy I had coming up. Uh, for me, my loans are from graduate school. I knew enough to, um, to get through, I, or I was, I was very lucky to get enough scholarships for my undergrad to be able to, to not graduate that with debt. And so I was like, oh, well, it's no big deal for me to go to grad school and finance the entire thing. Um, and it turns out that was a terrible idea. So um, for me, I'm now, you know, I'm, and I'm, and I hold an incredible amount of privilege going through that, right? And so I'm also knowing that I'm not as impacted as, as other folks in this, and it's still pretty debilitating. And so thinking through, you know, what, it always amazes me when I think about what our economy would look like if the, the folks who have student debt had that, uh, th those finances available, you know, to spend on other things. We see people not buy, not able to buy homes, not able to purchase new cars. Some people are choosing not to start families because of this, right? And so this is really impacting the, the ripple effect of the student loan, uh, student debt crisis is, is massive. And so for me, this is, a really important resolution because while this is not something that we as a as a municipality as a town can can control we need to be sending this message um especially and i think this is a really important part especially as a college town right i mean we have people in this town you you ian and alicia both talk to are both umass grads right we have folks every day who are deeply impacted by this who are residents in this town and so i think this is particularly important for amherst um, to to really clearly send this message up and then i also want to ditto and uh, check off on everything that ian and alicia and pat said as well as what's in the resolution which i think is beautifully written awesome okay that's great um yes ian um and just one other thing um in addition to everything that's been said already. Um, we do have one line a little bit further down that touches on how it it is an intergenerational issue as well. Um, I mean, there's, there is a lot of focus, um, rightly so, on the way it affects uh, millennials and uh, Gen Z uh, student borrowers, but um, one out of five uh, people responsible for student debt um, are over, six, or over 50. And um, social security wages or social security benefits can be garnished for um, falling behind on uh, student debt payments. So it's it's a uh, it, it affects all of us. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you. This is this is great, and um, I really appreciate all of the comments that you've made um, and for bringing this forward. And so, just to explain to you, Ian, what we'll be doing here is we'll be reviewing this document for clarity, consistency, and actionability, um, and then we will make a recommendation for this to be sent to the town council for a full vote. Um, and at that time, I think usually the sponsors will have another opportunity um, to speak on, 
on the the measure and uh, so we'll, I'm sure one of the sponsors will make sure that you know when that's happening so you can attend if you'd like to. <laughs> All right. So, um, and so we'll start our work here. And then if we have any particular questions um, as we move along, we'll call on um, one of the sponsors to answer. So, um, are there any other committee, you know, I, and I'm, I'm a little unclear and I think I asked maybe you, Mandy, or no, it was you, Pat, I asked you about how these sponsorships work, generally speaking, and that's just a bigger philosophical discussion, I think. Um, but is it generally the practice of GOL to ask its members if there are any other members who would like to sponsor a measure that comes before them? I've seen that happen, but for certain things, but is that because the full council hasn't been asked? Yes, Pat. You're muted, Pat. Apologies. Um, I don't, and Mandy Jo may correct me, so, but that's fine. Um, I don't remember that necessarily happening that people uh, added themselves on in GOL or other times. Um, and it seemed, it, I don't know. I, I I feel like it's it's the people who this group coalesce really came together um, to do this, and it feels normal. So then, other people adding their names seems like why are we doing that, and is it necessary? So, and I don't think it is. Um, but I there I don't. I I sent you something that was more articulate than that. It was very helpful. It, and I think I would love for that to be something that we could talk about as a council um, because there is an equitable, an equitable way for us to do this. And I think one of the things that has occurred is maybe with proclamations, we have asked counselors who would like to sponsor these. Um, and, and even in that case, I think you made some great points, Pat. So I really appreciated that. Um, I see, I think Jennifer's hand went up first and then Mandy. I kind of, I agree with Pat that I think <clears throat> the sponsors have done a lot of work and I, you know, and they, I feel like maybe it shows more support, but maybe it also dilutes it. So I guess I, I would feel, wouldn't feel right putting my name as a sponsor since I haven't done any of the work, but I wouldn't want it to be interpreted that I didn't support it by not, so it, it kind of puts you in an awkward position. Yes, I, it, it, I do support it. I, I wouldn't want to just throw my name on to kind of kind right. of glom onto it. But where where we support, I mean, this literally could have come just from Ian and Alicia, say. Right. Um, and and that would be fine. Where we show our support is in the council with our vote. I but, agree. So yeah. that's why I feel like it's uncomfortable to ask GOL if they want to, because it doesn't feel right maybe to just add your name, but you wouldn't want it, one maybe wouldn't want to be interpreted as not supporting it by not adding mm, your name. Yeah. Absolutely. And the full council hasn't been asked. You know, there could be somebody else on the council. Um, but I do agree there's a certain magic to the way these come together in the sense that like the people that sort of coalesce around them, that happens and they do the work and then it um, and I do think the vote shows the real support at the council, um, whether your name's on it or not. Um, so there was Mandy and then Anika. Yeah, um, same with Pat. Um, this is different than the ones where GOL, I don't know whether it was last meeting or the meeting before, where we said who wants to add their names to the Black History Month one. Those come every year and they sort of just show up in GOL without right. even really a council sponsor per se. Um, because they come and so some name has to be on there. And so there definitely needs to be a better way to figure out whose name should be on there, even for those yearly ones. But um, I think th that was a different situation than this completely. Thank you for clarifying that. That's exactly the one I was thinking about, um, the, the Black History Month and also um, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Um, so those were the two. Anika? Uh, yes, and also to <clears throat> Manny's uh, point that we also came in and we did some work on those proclamations. Right. Uh, 
we didn't do the clearly here work has been done we're not just piling names on what has been done i'm sure that we all support this in spirit both locally and on a national through a national lens and uh you know i mean there may be some of us who are not affected by this but i think probably that you know the majority of, of folks are so yeah i mean you know just in general thank you to ian and, and the sponsors for their work around it Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll make a note um, to maybe speak with Lynn and Anna about having how we can, you know, and, and Pat, like I said, what you what you sent back to me was just so helpful in terms of think how we think about what we're going to add our name to and, and why and and what that means. All right, so let's start with the first, whereas, um, well, actually, we got to start with the title, right, <laughs> Mandy? I actually do want to change or recommend a change to the title. Um, oh, it's very I, long. I, 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 I felt the, <laughs> the first thing is we normally never say town of Amherst resolution. We normally just say resolution. Um, and and I think it would be more succinct if it was just resolution calling on President Joe Biden to immediately cancel all student loan debt. Um, you know, I I even in the resolution, I wasn't even sure about the Western Mass Area Labor Federation's call, but when we're doing a resolution, it's now our call. It's not someone else's per se. Um, that doesn't mean, I know later on the, the Federation is mentioned, um, but that that's sort of my proposal for shortening the title. Ian, do you want, do you have any, um, any thoughts on that? Um, I actually hadn't seen this title as it is. I, I thought it had been already Town of Amherst Resolution. Um, I, I'm totally fine and support um, cutting out the reference in the title. Okay, great. And and do any of the other sponsors object to that? Does that work? Okay, great. Um, and Mandy, your hand is still up. Is it? Um, in further reference to this? Okay, great. All right, so let's look at the first whereas and please raise your hand if you have a comment to make about this. Yes, Ian. Um, I was just gonna say, I also do have a copy of the document with um, footnotes or endnote citations, if that's helpful. Uh, just to have on the record, um, but in our editing process, we, we thought it'd be easier to read without having that in the resolution. Yeah, and, and you know, that's interesting because some of us are working on another resolution where there have been annotations made by the community sponsor and they were extremely helpful. I think we'll probably be fine because we have you here. Um, but if for the record, we want to be able to have that, I'm sure we can find a way to have those um, somehow referenced somewhere. Um, but if anyone has any other thoughts on that, let me know. All right, so anything else on the first whereas? All right, not seeing any, so let's move to the second. Hmm. Okay, please raise your hand if you have any comments or changes on this. Not seeing any. Okay, so uh, the third. Pat, you're muted. Uh, I don't really have anything. Hey, unmuted. <laughs> I did. I, no, I'm unmuted. Uh, at least what I'm saying is when I'm looking at this version of it, I'm seeing lots of spacing issues and I'm not sure. Um, like to me, it looks like there's double spaces between whereas and across things like that. So I'm, I'm a little confused about whether it's how I'm seeing it on. Uh, and now I don't quite know what's going on. Manny's doing her work. <laughs> yeah, good. Thank you, dear. You're it was justified. 
it was in justified format, which means you get the spacing issues. So I just yeah. changed Okay, good. Thank that. you. Thank you very much. Um, and this, and uh, women in particular is on uh, comma space R. I'm not sure why, unless that should be hyphenated. Women, but I don't they, think so. Or women. Word wants you to get rid of the word in particulars yeah. so that it reads, reads women and black women are. I think if we just that, it'll be fine too, sort of. Do, is there another in particular? Is there another way to say to say that that carries the same sort of strength, um, but maybe even in a better way? Well, I kind of think taking it out makes it stronger. I, they are disproportionately affected. So I, I guess I see it a little differently. So it reads right now, women and black women in particular are disproportionate, yeah. so. Yeah, oh, that's true, yeah. That's true. Ian? Um, how would uh, women, comma, particularly black women, comma, uh, are disproportionately affected by the $2 trillion crisis? That works. Yeah, I like that too. Anna, were you going to say something along that line? Okay. That exact thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So then we can move, if there aren't anything else, if there's nothing else here, we'll move on to the fourth. Wow. Any comments or questions on this one or? Okay. All right, and then the fifth. Hmm. Amanda, yeah. Um, the period semicolon. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I, I would get rid of, I think it's the period that disappears, not the semicolon. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Period. <laughs> and I see there were some, so this is a quote from some somewhere, and is that what was referenced at the bottom of the resolution? The, the bottom is to the next, is the first one is to the next whereas. There's a, it's hard There's to see, footnote. but there's a footnote right there. In oh, the, in the next okay. whereas. so quotes we can just quote and we don't need to say anything about them we don't we don't need to cite them by any ian do you have do you have an idea of where this particular quote came from um i can get that in a moment um hold on a second sure take your time and we can move on and then we'll come back to that all right, so uh, let's move on. Oh, Anna, please. Yeah, I was just gonna say once Ian finds that source, I'm wondering if just for kind of the way that this looks, if it would be better to say according to dot, 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 and then the quote versus just having a quote as an entire paragraph. I think that's I great. agree with that. I was, I, I was looking to the other sponsors. I wasn't sure if that would work for y'all, but yeah. Yeah, no, it works very well. Thank you. All right, perfect. Um, okay, the next one. Uh, Mandy. Yeah, um, factually, there's no support listed here for the 32 individual borrowers are only are only 32 in 25 years. Um, I've seen numbers that are much higher than that. So I, I'm not sure that's factually correct. And there's no site here for me to figure out where that number came from. Uh, Ian or Alicia or Anna or Pat? 
Um, yeah, I've just pulled up my my document with the citations. Um, should, is there a, there's not a chat thing that I can put these into, is there? No, unfortunately there's not, but you could email them um, to Mandy's council email um, and yep. then she can retrieve them that way. Does that work for you, Mandy? That's okay. fun. It's Haneke, H-A-N-N-E-K-E-M at AmherstMA.gov. And, and I wonder if this, for this whereas more than 44 million, that it should also say whereas according to. Uh, because there is, if you look at after debt, I can't see it now, Mary. Uh, you rolled it. The, yeah, this this one cites this the Good. Okay. case for student debt cancellation from gotcha. freedom to prosper dot org. Good. That's that's what this little I here yeah. is. Which we could probably turn those eyes to actual numbers if it might be easier for people to interpret them then. And to see, yeah. Anna. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to go up for some reason in my head, I thought it was the per 32%, but that's not right either. Um, so I'm just because my, my research was also turning up a different number. Um, so yeah, so I, clarity on that might be, might be good. Okay. I um, think I came up. Oh, uh, sorry, what, sorry, sorry. No, I'll, you're, I'll you're, email this to, to Ian and Pat and Alicia, but um, but what is the figure that you have? And well, so I'm looking at, the, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at educationdata.org. And so that's the part is I want to make sure I'm doing my due diligence that that's a reputable site. Um, and it does say that uh, this is, well, don't write this yet. So prior to 2021, 463,444 had their loans forgiven either in part or in full. So that's not quite the same thing. Um, but it's that I think that the shocking number for me is among processed applications for PSLF, which is the public service loan forgiveness, 2.6% have been effect, uh, accepted. Um, and, and that prior to 2020, it was 0.7% of eligible borrowers benefited from student loan forgiveness eventually, which is very, very low. Yeah. So it sounds like we want to maybe rework this with the um, the, the the data that you found. Yeah. Um, and Ian, I see you shaking your head. Does that work okay on your end? Yeah, yeah. And I just uh, emailed to um, Mandy Jo the um, the citations. Perfect. Um, okay, Anna, your hand is still up. Do you? Okay, <laughs> so let's let's move on, and we're going to come back to this. Although now we're asking Mandy to do quite a lot because she's <laughs> reading the email and moving on, and I don't think I have the ability to scroll this. Um, but I think okay. we're okay. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah, take your time. That's fine. I just want to save this document and get it somewhere that I can open it. So um, the 32 number, um, is, that's from a March 10th uh, Business Insider article. Um, and so that may have changed over the past um, uh, year, um, but I can, I can forward that along as well. That, that is listed in the, in the citations that I um, sent just now. Um, so this is saying that only 32 people have had their student loan forgiven in 25 uh, years? Via the um, income-driven repayment plans. Ah, okay. Okay. That's, and so that's what your citation clarifies. I see. Okay. Jennifer? I'm just thinking since... Um, would we maybe want to um, say as of a particular date? So let's say somebody was forgiven tomorrow, it would still be accurate. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. 
And should we name the program in this? Like, should we specify it to say as of? I think so. I think so too. I think so, because it's a really stunning number and to have it backed up as much as possible is great. Yeah, it's actually, um, I mean, not that I don't believe it, but it's unbelievable. It's so stunning. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to add as we're going to add a date and we're going to add the actual program that we're referring to. Yeah, I think that's helpful. And I, I found the 32 uh, number too. So thank you. And actually that article is, is itself citing a report from uh, the National Consumer Law Center, Student Borrower Protection Center. So you're, are you saying that there's like an original source to the data? Yeah, yeah, that might be okay. more helpful. Yeah, maybe we want, I, I would I would say yeah. we should include the original source. Yeah. yeah. Andy, I'll send that to you. I, know. Uh, I, I hold on. Oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know whether the insider is the one you want or you said that was citing something else uh, I have the original report if that's a better citation it's a little bit of a stronger one I think yes I agree absolutely yeah. Ian is that okay with you yeah, yeah, sure. I was about to send that, um, but if, if you have it ready. So, Anna, are you going to send, do you want to send that? I just did. Oh, perfect. Thank you. I'm still waiting on that one so we can move on. Okay, I think you have to scroll up again a little bit. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we are at the one in five people, right? Do we want to again say according to in this to keep it consistent? Do we and which do we know what this one is, um, where this came from, Ian? Yep. So from freedom to prosper. Okay, great. Hmm. Any other comments on this one? Okay, um, so the next. So are we on the eliminating yes. student loan? Yes. I think, I think it would be clearer if we got rid of this comment between providing better overall health outcomes and the word since. Because with that comma there, I always read the start of the clause since as being a third item in the list and it's not. It is part of the second item in the list. Mm -hmm. Can it, um, yeah, um, and also, does there need to be a comment between in the second line? support residents by beginning? Should there, does there have to be a comment between residents and by? Okay. 
Say that one more. Okay, resident. Okay, a moral. I think Jennifer's saying get rid of that comma. Yeah. For, for. <laughs> That's right. Yes, get rid of that comma. Yep, yeah. by beginning to address racial and gender wage disparities, providing better overall health and outcomes. Is the since piece like a bracket, like something that should be in brackets? I guess I'm having a little bit of confusion around. Is it that sort of? It, it's a it's a clause clarifying or explaining the better overall health outcomes, right? Could, it, could we just say as instead of since? It's still not reading like 100% clearly to me. Um, let me see if there are other hands up. Uh, is it what? Is oh, no. I was just gonna say, if we put that clause last, it might be easier. That was exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, I think that will help a lot. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> That's great. Any problems with doing that? So everything stays, we just move the order to. Right. Okay. All right. So it reads as a list more clearly that way. Yeah. Great. Okay. Moving on. Any comments or questions on this one? Okay, moving on. We're on this one. Yep. Oh, that's, any questions other than that's really powerful. Um, okay, moving on then. Um, in this, whereas I would like to delete the acronym because it's the only place it's ever used. And so I think we can just say the Western Massachusetts Area Labor Federation, comma, AFL-CIO, which, and then that. Okay. Is this, um, Ian, would you say this is which is according to their mission dedicated? Like, is this, did that quote come from their mission statement or? Yeah. 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 So maybe just clarifying that um, would be good. Jennifer? Did there be um, a comma after AFL-CIO? I don't I, think so. The title, Ian? I, I, I think that's how I'll, I'll double check the website, but I think that's how we describe ourselves. Let me let me double check real quick. Usually if they you get a correction, there should be a comma before which, but not a that. So should which be that? Whereas the Massachusetts area labor, AFL CIO, no, it has to be which. Well, that according to their mission. I it, think whose mission is to build power. Yeah, I, I like it the way it is. I don't I, I think it's it. fine. It's <laughs> okay. missing, later on, it's missing an end quote and I don't know where to yeah. put the end quote. Right. Yeah, after communities. Is it after communities? Yeah. Okay. Jennifer, your hand is still up. But no. I think, wait a minute. But, okay. Um, so we we don't want to add that it comes from their mission. We're gonna we're fine with it the way that it is. Yeah, I think it's clear, which is it's dedicated to doing this, um, and it's a quote. So yeah, know. whose mission is dedicated to building power? I don't think we need to say its mission because okay. it's clear. I, I I agree with Pat. Okay, Ian. Um, just in terms of the commas in the name, uh, there is a comma after federation, and then also often a comma after CIO. Yeah. Correct. Okay, and um, do we need to um, capitalize 
no, we don't need to capitalize town councilors, do we? Because we're not speaking about a particular, okay. Right, yeah. Okay, all right, so we can move on to the, uh, Ian, your hand is up. Sorry about that, that was just the <laughs> That's comment. okay, no worries. Okay, next one. And what was the reference here? Oh, that's our resolution. Okay. Any comments or questions on this one? Well, all right. Then moving on. Any questions on this? Comments? Nothing? Okay. All right. And the final, or the be it further resolved. Michelle? Yes. Oh, yes, please. Sorry, Mandy. <laughs> Go ahead. It's not on this be it further resolved. We normally have in these types of resolutions one more be it further resolved, which is to task oh, Athena yeah. with yeah, yeah. sending it. Yeah. To everyone mentioned in the prior right. be it resolves. Oh, gotcha. yeah. That's great. Yeah, I forgot that. Sorry. Do we, we don't need after Mindy Dom, we don't, do we not need a comma there? There is a comma there. Is there? You know, yeah. there isn't in the, in the there one above, in, there isn't. Yeah. I oh. think there is one in the, I think you do need one there. There we go. No. Perfect. All right. Looks good. Um, any other final comments or questions on this? Okay. Oh, I have a question. Yeah. Is this coming before the council on the 7th? That was, yes. The hope is that it will come. Yeah, we were hoping that's, I think, why we moved it forward. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure Ian had that information. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, so, yeah, it's March 7th, and um, all of the information for accessing that is on the website. It's hard to say when these <laughs> things will actually happen in a given meeting, but <laughs> um, this would these usually go on the consent agenda. Is that right? Right. Okay. Um, so we need to make a motion, though, um, if we're ready to do that. Ian, yes. Um, sorry, quick question about the process. So it's um, presented at the March 7th meeting would it be voted on that same meeting or would it then be voted on at an at a subsequent meeting yes it will be voted on at that meeting so it will be included in a consent agenda which is sort of a slate of things that we vote on all at once um, but lynn will very likely give the sponsors the opportunity to speak about it um, and then it will be voted on by the full council for approval yeah great thanks sure Okay, so I'm gonna move, if there aren't any other questions, or would you like to make the motion, Pat? No, that's okay, go ahead. Okay, so I will move to declare the resolution calling on President Joe Biden to immediately cancel all student loan debt, um, clear, consistent, and actionable. And I'll second it. Excellent. Or Alicia, do you wanna second it? She can't. She's not a she member. Not a oh, right. No. <laughs> I was like, oh, I just learned something new. You can do that when sponsors are. Um, you can't. You can't. <laughs> Sorry. Great. <Right. laughs> totally excited. Let's do a roll call vote. Jennifer? Aye. Uh, yes. 
Mandy. Hi. Anika. Yes. And I'm a yes to, and Pat. Aye. Yes. All right. Great. Congratulations. <laughs> we got through that. That's Yay. awesome. Thank you, Ian. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks very much for your time and consideration. See you thank on you. the 7th. <laughs> um, so Anna and Alicia will keep you here and we'll move right into the swim um, measure. Okay. And um, Mandy, you maybe don't have that one. Is that true? Or I'm not sure if Athena had, uh, I don't think it's in the, no. I, so, I, I only have it in action. PDF. I just have it in PDF, so I can't make any changes. Um, we can talk about the changes. I have a um, few. I, let me see if I can send it to you quickly, Mandy. Okay. Do you want to talk about it though for a moment while we're waiting on that? Sure. I, I'm just going to share my screen with the changes. They're very. Okay, before you do that, Mandy, let's just have um, maybe quickly Anna and Alicia talk about kind of the just a quick comment on the resolution or the proclamation, excuse me. Sure. So um, I can I can start and I am excited that uh, Alicia signed on. So yeah, her name should should be on this as well once we get the editable version. Um, so last weekend, the uh, Amherst High School girls swim team won the uh, state championship for the first time ever. And um, we wanted to celebrate that and, and uh, celebrate that accomplishment. Um, they also, not for nothing, won the first sectional since 99 and uh, were completely undefeated in the 200 yard medley, um, which is, also phenomenal. So this is really this was really a way to formally recognize them. I know that there are other recognitions in the works as well, potentially on the state level for them. But we wanted to do something as a town to to recognize uh, their their accomplishments. So the resolution is really comprised of um, mostly just kind of some some stats, uh, and then also just a couple little opinion pieces. Opinion pieces. That's not the right phrase. A uh, couple little other statements about, you know, the, the support that they got and what it takes to win a state, uh, a state championship. And Alicia, I don't know if you have anything to add. Uh, um, so I also want to thank Anna for all of her work on this. Um, I signed on a bit later, but I also support this. And I think it's really important for us. I see this as a form of youth empowerment because we need to recognize all of the great accomplishments from the youth, especially from our town. Um, and I think that just encourages them to do more and people to go harder. Um, and so that's why I am so excited to sign on to this. My best friend in high school was also on the swim team. So I am like having nostalgia and just feeling very proud. So thank you, Anna. And that is all I have to say. Excellent. And Anna, it was already outed that. It that, was, it's true. I was on the swim team. <laughs> Yeah, I was very slow. I was always in the furthest lane, which is where the slow people go. <laughs> All right, Mandy, I'm going to turn it to you. Um, you had some, you, you can go ahead. I did. One of them's not necessary because there are two counselor sponsors now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> there, there was a plural there. Um, I was like, I think she's going to sign on, but I'm going to say counselors and let it go. Yeah. <laughs> um, the third, whereas the end should just be not capitalized yeah thank you and then the only other thing is this period down here and then adding lynn's signature sort of line. yeah I heard that signature box okay yeah like i said they were very minor yeah it's a pretty simple it is but it it but says it, all it <laughs> hopefully <laughs> except that you were on the snow team which i think yeah we were not going to include that <laughs> So, well, well, before we vote, and, and I don't think it needs to be added in here um, because it is technically the high school swimming and diving team, there are middle schoolers on the team. Um, oh. I think there are three middle schoolers at a minimum on the team, but they are competing for the high school. But I just thought while I, while we do this, that it is, it is, there's eighth graders on that team too that helped win that championship. Um, I don't know that it necessarily needs to be added into that, but I thought it would be nice to recognize that um, I, if we're speaking about it. Yeah, and I it, didn't know that. So it, I wouldn't mind uh, including it. She we could add another whereas. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go, go ahead. ahead. 
Uh, what if we added another whereas that says, whereas the uh, Amherst Regional High School girls swim team is comprised of members from our, from Amherst, Pelham, Shootsbury, Leverett, and the middle school, the Amherst Regional Middle School. Or simply from students from the Amherst Regional, uh, students from both the high school and middle school, or something like that. Yeah, I think you can add it up there without adding another necessarily. Um, okay. While Mandy is typing that, I have something I wanted to throw out there. So the team from the school perspective is the swimming and diving team. The championships is the swimming. So uh, mm. I wanted to, so there's a couple, like I could see at the top saying the Amherst Regional High School girls swimming and diving team, because that is the name of the team, but the diving championships are separate. So I, I was, I was a little bit torn and would love some thoughts on the best way of phrasing this. Mm. State swimming championship. I'm going to confirm that, but I believe it was specifically. Yeah, that's so we can just put that swimming right here in yeah. the first whereas that they works. Won the state swimming championship. Yeah, so the question was about the title. So thank you. That was the was changing it to swimming and diving team. And are there some this is um, members that swim and dive? Oh god. No, not that I know of. <laughs> okay. I'm just curious. <laughs> they dive and drown. <laughs> they they dive to start their race, but not no, as but I mean they're they're <laughs> The divers and the swimmers are separate. They're separate yeah. as far as I know. <laughs> so See, word I'm is, not a swimmer. Word is picking up the fact that there's no apostrophe somewhere in girls ever. Um, girls team. It's, it's, uh, I struggled with that, but it is, it is what they are called. No, no, I, I know that we don't, the, the titles and all don't ever use the apostrophe. Yeah. Including the girls team title here. Okay. I'm going to confirm that, but yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Are there any other, um, any other comments or questions on this? Okay. No, no apostrophe. Oh, and the now therefore we should say swimming championship. Down here yeah. yeah, that's good. All right. So I'm not seeing any other hands. So um, someone would like to make the motion other than me. <laughs> I'm happy to do it, but <laughs> okay. So I move to declare the proclamation of congratulations to the Amherst, oops. Oh, sorry. I make it, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll just share it again, I was too quick. <laughs> I was too slow, <laughs> Anna. Um, I wanna just confirm something. You got me a little paranoid. So I wanna, just before you make your motion, uh, and I know we're at time, but um, it is actually called, I've seen it both called the swimming champions, championships and the swim championship. And so I just wanna triple check yeah. uh, if you can give me like 30 seconds, I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, that's a good, I think that's good to check. It gave, me, gave me a little bit of a panic. And Athena, I know you're probably like, yeah, because um, we're supposed to be in another meeting. Uh, uh, uh. Website is terrible. And, I, think, um, I think we're good. Athena, do you have to leave right at 11? Um, if the, I, Anna and I have a meeting with Lynn immediately after the GOL meeting adjourns. So do you anticipate that this meeting, you're gonna continue on this meeting much later than 11 o'clock? I'm gonna check with members as soon as we make this motion. Um, we don't have any anybody in the attendance, so there's no public comment. Um, so I let's make this motion and then we'll check with members. Um, okay, so- swim, So if we could change swimming to swim. All right, so Can I move. that be changed up there too? Yep. Is it the- No, oh no, it's oh, the swimming no. and diving team. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, sorry. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm done now. 
<laughs> okay. I move to declare the proclamation of congratulations to the Amherst Regional High School girls swimming and diving team. Clear, consistent, and actionable. A second. Come in. Jennifer has seconded it. Okay. Uh, Mandy, how do you vote? Aye. I'm an aye. Um, Jennifer, or yeah, Jennifer. Aye. Anika. Aye. And Pat. <laughs> she seemed to disappear. Yeah, she went to the door. <laughs> like, Well, in the meantime, thank you, Alicia and Anna, for joining us. Um, no, Pat, how do you vote? Hi. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to let somebody in. <laughs> All right. Thank you both for joining us. And this is a great uh, proclamation. So thank you for bringing it forward. And we'll see it um, on Monday, I think, at the council. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Alicia. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. All right. So, yeah, <laughs> we still have a lot left on the agenda, friends. <laughs> um, Pat? Pat, I see you're talking, but you're muted. It does feel like we should end the meeting. I, th I feel like Athena needs to be elsewhere. Um, okay. Unless there's a way we can shift her responsibilities, but I don't know. If I can I can reschedule with Lynn and Anna if that's what we need to do. So do, do what you need to do. So I, I have a suggestion actually, um, because we, we, we have, still have quite a bit and some of the stuff is timely. Um, and so has it ever happened where an, an additional meeting is added um, so that we wouldn't wait two weeks to meet again? Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. My question is the next council meeting, we're not gonna get anything in by the 7th. So we're aiming for the 21st. Do we have anything other than what's remaining on this agenda scheduled for the 16th? So we need to have um, the, uh, let me just take a look here. We need to have the child abuse awareness proclamation ready for the by the 21st. Okay. So that means we can still do it on the 16th. So we could, um, for if we were to meet next week at this time, um, then we would finish the rules of procedure uh, and then and do the standing committee structure and do the child abuse awareness proclamation. Or we could just hold that actually, yeah. So I would just request if we move the meeting up, well, if we schedule one for the ninth and we get through everything that was going to be on the 16th as well as what we didn't get through today that we then cancel the 16th. Like, you know, Love that. You know hopes of that we're, even with meetings, but we're ensuring that we will get through everything we need to by the 21st by doing that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm in Colorado visiting my brother that week. So I was going to, you know, participate, but it would be better not to. And Jennifer, you were going to say. I, I, I might have to miss that meeting also. So I'd like to have it. That'd be great if we could do it next week. Okay. Anika, does that work for you? I'm sorry. Could you tell me the date? Martin. So it would be um, March 9th and we would have to reschedule what we just scheduled on the plant medicine because we scheduled that for 9 a.m. But I'm sure we can do that. So we would be doing GOL beginning at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, March 9th. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That works. Okay, great. And Jennifer, your hand still up? No, you're good. Okay, so let's do that. And then, um, which means I'll need to turn this around fairly quickly. Um, but question, do you think I, so do I need a report for mon Monday as well? Another report? Technically for the votes on the proclamations, yes. Okay, um, so just a brief report and we'll Very brief. Okay. noting those votes and then saying, I, I would just say you could either orally report or write in that report that we're meeting on the 9th to continue rules and standing committee discussions. Perfect. Okay. Um, and so we already did the item that wasn't anticipated. Uh, we know what our next agenda looks like. So I'm going to move to adjourn the meeting at 11.06 a.m. And thank you, everyone. It was a really great meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.
Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, Athena.